Today we're going to look at one of the features of the Rad Doc for WinForms, and that is the ability to serialize its layout to an XML format to save the entire layout and then eventually reload that layout, recreate the exact look and feel of the Rad Doc from the serialized XML. What you see in front of you is a standard WinForms application in Visual Studio 2008 with a Rad Doc for WinForms, the number of doc panels already laid out in the form. What we want to do is add buttons to this application that enables the user to save and then eventually load the layout of the rad doc, however they've modified it, to an XML file. So the first thing we need to do then is add some buttons. And to do that, I'm going to introduce you at the same time to the new design time features of the rad tool strip for WinForms. So to get started, let me select my rad doc and then select the properties window for my rad doc. And I'm going to change its docking layout to none for now so that I can actually access my form. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. And let's see if we can get the uh, hold the rad doc and make it small enough to introduce our form. And I think our layout's interfering here, so let me go ahead and just do this a different way. I'll just go look for its height setting and we'll go, just go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Just go ahead and say 300 for now. And we'll eventually restore this size, but we just need to give ourselves some room to add a tool strip. So we'll come to our toolbox, drag and drop a tool strip onto our application. This is the new tool strip, tool strip design time for the RAD controls for WinForms. And one of the things that's been done to the RAD tool strip is we've tried to make it much easier to add tools when there are no tools there by default, uh, when it first is added to the form, of course. In the past, it's been a little bit difficult to add tools from the very beginning, but now we have very easy design time for adding additional toolbar buttons or adding elements to our toolbars that have already been placed there. So what we need is two buttons then, so let me add a rad button element, and let me just go ahead and add two rad button elements to our single toolbar. And in our first rad button element, let me go ahead and set the text property on this. And we'll set the text equal to save layout. And on our second button, we'll set the text property equal to load layout. And we'll handle the events for those in just a minute. The next thing we need to do then is restore the layout for our dock. So I'll select my dock and then go back to its docking property. And this is the layout docking property until it to once again fill the remaining space in the form. Now you see that it goes behind my tool strip, but I can fix that by simply adding some padding to the top of my dock. And we'll say add padding top, let's call it 30. And now we should be able to see that at runtime. So now that we've got everything laid out, we need to handle the events for our buttons in our rad tool strip so that we can actually do something on save and load. And what we want to do, of course, is when we click save, take whatever layout is currently exists for the rad doc, persist it to XML, and when load is clicked, load back whatever layout's in that XML file. So I'm going to click on my save layout button added to my rad tool strip, click on the events tab for that button, and then on click, we'll handle the click event now, saving or serializing the rad doc layout to XML could not be easier. So I'm simply going to, through IntelliSense, look for my rad doc element. So I'll say rad doc1. Then uh, you notice that rad doc has a save to XML method. I'll simply select that. And all I need to pass into the saved XML method is the string name of an XML file. If it does not exist, rad doc will automatically create it. Or a stream or a text writer. So if I want to write my layout to, let's say, a database, I can do that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it to a file directly, and I'll just call this doclayout.xml. And then as you would expect, in order to, lay to load the layout, we'll just do exactly the same. We'll come to our load layout button. We'll select its click event, or we'll create a handler for its click event. And when load is clicked, we'll simply say rad doc one load from xml Load from XML similarly expects an XML string from one of the three sources that it allows within its constructor and or within its, uh, within its parameters. And we'll go ahead and specify the same file name, doclayout.xml. So now we can easily save and load. Only one line of code to do both the save and the load. And if we run the application now, we should have the complete functionality we're looking for. So I'm going to hit Control F5. Our application will load, and we should see our layout. And here we have our form with our already layout-defined rendering here for us with the rad doc for WinForms. You can see we already have a floating tool window, a number of other windows and panels already created. Now what we want to do then is manipulate this, change this around so that we can then save the layout and see if the persisted layout can be reloaded from XML. 
So let's start by taking tool window 2. We'll just dock it, let's say, to the side of the application. Uh, let's say we don't need tool window 6 anymore. We'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll go ahead and make tool window 3 taller, make it auto expand and collapse. We'll make tool window 1 a little bit narrower. And then let's switch the order of tool window 4 and tool window 5, and we'll go ahead and select tool window 5 again. So we made quite a few changes here, and so that's good. That represents some change we can remember. Let's go ahead now and click Save Layout. When I do that, we execute that single line of code we created, the save to XML. If the file does not exist, RadDoc will automatically create it. So let's now close our application. Since we did not specify any additional path, DocLayout.XML is going to be created in the same path as the application is running, which in this case, if we show our hidden files, is bin debug, and we can see it automatically created for us DocLayout.XML. If I inspect this, we can see the XML format, or the XML definition that RadDoc creates when you do use the saved XML feature. And now if we click the Load from XML button, when we run our application again, this format will be read back in, and the doc will automatically re-display that layout we just created. So let's go ahead and go back to our application. Let's hit Control F5 one more time. Our application reloads. There's the original state as we designed it, because remember our application logic only restores the state when we click the button. This is not something it's doing on load. So if we go now and click Load Layout, we should read our XML file, and there we go. We go exactly back to the state we created before. We see our changed window sizes, our reordered documents, and even our expand and collapse to window 3. So all these layouts, all these complicated layouts we created, they were completely remembered in serialized XML. And with two lines of code, one to save and one to load, we've created a rad doc application that can save its state even across application sessions. Hopefully this quick introduction to rad doc for WinForms serialization shows you everything you need to know to get started with this feature. And hopefully you'll find this useful in your own application development.